Hello everyone, this is Evan Abrams, and in this After Effects tutorial, we're going to be creating this random triangle transition using Adobe After Effects. It's really great for transitioning between really any kind of layer, and it's a lot simpler than it looks, and that's kind of the theme of most tutorials, is everything's a lot simpler than it looks. Anyway, here in After Effects, I know it looks very complex and interesting, but really, all of these sandstone layers here are all the same thing, and this one's just set to be an adjustment layer, and these ones are all just being the alpha track mats of other layers, so when one's happening and the other one's happening at the same time, it looks really cool, but let me just tell you, once you know the secret, you'll think it's all very lame. So, what we're making, is a little preview of what's happening at the end, is something like this. We're going to be creating something similar to this. It's all procedural and very controlled, but this is the element we're going to be creating. And if you just bear with me, it's going to start looking nothing like this, but eventually we'll work towards it. Without further ado, let's, uh, you know, make a new project right here. Yours probably already looks like this. And let's get started by creating the first unit. We need to make that first triangle, and we're going to do that by making a new composition. It's going to be a 120 by 120 square pixel uh, situation. Uh, 120 is a lovely number. It uh, divides into 1920 and 1080, uh, an even number of times, 16 and 9 times to be specific. It's a little fun math, which will allow us to have squares that don't get kind of cut off or halved or scale weird if we want to fit perfectly inside a regular HD frame. 120 by 120 frame rate, doesn't matter. And we're going to call this composition UNIT. And I'm using all caps because it's important. This first unit, we could make it any number of ways. I think the quickest is to just go new, solid, make comp size, make it totally black, hit OK, whoop de woo And we are going to apply to this an effect here in the Effects and Presets panel. Let's get the linear, linear wipe, transition completeness all the way up to 100% completeness. We're going to move ahead to one second on the timeline, drop a keyframe, move ahead, you know, a bunch, maybe uh, not quite... 20 frames and then transition completeness down to zero. If we hit uh, hit the U on the keyboard, you can see those two lovely keyframes. And you can see this boring linear wipe linearly moving across the screen in linear time. And what we're going to do is take those keyframes, make them exciting by, you know, hitting F9 and easy easing them. Or you can right click and blah, blah menus, easy ease them, make it happen. So once we've eased them, we can go into the graph editor. You can ease them from the graph editor. We're looking at a speed graph here in the graph editor. And I'm just going to drag the influence handles of this last keyframe here. And we're going to move the, the playhead here to basically one frame past the first keyframe. And we are going to move this influence handle so that the hump right here that uh, represents how fast this thing's going. And we want that hump to be at its maximum at the first frame of visibility so that it's exciting. And exciting animation is what we're all about. Uh, so that looks pretty good. I think we've created our first unit. Now let's make a new composition and let's call this the transition element. This is where we're going to actually make the element that does the transitioning. And it's going to be a square that is 1920 by 1920. Sounds pretty good. We've made a little square. Let's make a big square. And again, similar settings, frame rate, all that stuff. Great. And we're good to go. So now we've got this big square. What a fun big square. Oh boy. So we're going to take our unit and we're going to drop it down on the timeline. Here we one tiny unit. Now we need to uh, replicate this and tile it uh, onto the screen. So we're going to use the Repetile. So hopefully you have this effect and uh, that yours is exactly like mine. And when you apply the Repetile to your layer, nothing happens right away. You need to expand this thing. So let's expand to the right. I don't know, man, like a thousand pixels each way and a thousand and a thousand and a thousand pixels every way, creating this, you know, wonderful mosaic of uh, 
of things. It's so good. Something you do need to do though, notice how, you know, it's kind of getting cut in half here on the edges. We need to adjust this a little bit just so that it's kind of squared off. Quick way to do that, just change the anchor point to zero, zero so that it's up in the corner. Whole layer kind of moves down like so. And now, you know, we got this nice grid, perfect grid, no halvesies. The next thing I want to kind of change is the tiling is not set to repeat but instead is gonna be set to random. So it's it's got these randos all over the place. It's like a college party, just randos all over the room, drinking your alcohol, sleeping on your couch. It's a nightmare. But now everything is random in space. We would like it now to be a little bit random in time. So we should probably displace this in time. And again, this is a callback that, uh, you know, we sort of name things the way we expect them to be used. So the time displacement effect is gonna get us through here, but the time displacement effect alone isn't going to take us where we wanna go. We need to create a layer that's gonna give that effect some information. So let me first make a new solid, wonderful, make it the comp size and hit okay. And this solid needs to have a gradient on it. So I'm gonna put a gradient ramp, might just be called ramp for you. And I want the ramp to go, I want it to start at zero, zero, and I want it to go to 1920 by 1920, corner to corner. And I want to add on top of this, I want to add a mosaic on top of this. And I'd like the mosaic to create 16 by 16 blocks, which you'll notice is kind of the same situation here. This is 16 blocks by 16 blocks of this unit. So I'm matching those up because when I use this information, when I take this and I pre-compose it, and I call this the gradient, mm, yeah, that's enough. And I move all the attributes to the new composition, hit okay. And then I use a new adjustment layer, boop, put that above the unit. Don't look at the gradient, poke its eye out. And we go in here to the time displacement and we apply time displacement to the adjustment layer. We use the gradient layer that we just created to uh, control things. You can see what it's doing is it's creating, you know, this wonderful wave of each of these individual tiles doing their own thing. If we didn't have the mosaic, if we go in here and we make the mosaic go away, then uh, things are a little bit janky. Maybe you're into that kind of look, but I am not into that kind of look. So you can see that's kind of working out. I want to, I want this to have a little bit different character to it. I'm gonna change the max displacement to 0.25 down from one second, uh, which is, it's just gonna expand, see that band there? It's gonna push it so that everything is kind of in flux all the time and there's there's less displacement, less time difference between the start and the end values here. Because what's happening is the time displacement is looking at the gradient layer and it's saying, okay, the value of these pixels is going to determine how shifted in time, how much, how close to 0.25 of a second shifted in time away from our current time do things need to be. It creates this kind of a thing. The next thing I want to do though, I still think this is a bit too uniform for for me what i want to do is i want to go into this gradient and i want to add add to this some noise some turbulent noise and you could you could add in some fractal noise if you want whatever the point is i just want to create a little bit of cloudiness in here i'm going to just change the noise type to linear increase the contrast a bunch and downplay, decrease the opacity 25%. So it's blending with the previous effect in the stack with the gradient ramp. You could do a lot of things. You could change the blending mode. You could layer them together differently, whatever, do whatever you feel. But what I want to do is still have it be dark up here, light down here, but you know, a little variation all throughout. And what that does is creates a little variation out here too which is exactly what we're into, so wonderful. The next thing to do, the very next thing to do is, is to sort of find on this layer where it starts. Where do things start kicking off? Where is the, the smallest flex of stuff going on? So looks like it's right, it looks like 20 frames is where things kind of kick off, which is pretty fun. So let's uh, hit the asterisk and put something there. And my uh, intuition tells me that it's probably gonna be at around 120 when things kind of settle down. So let's put a, put a marker there and there. 
Awesome. And we are ready to make use of this transitional element. And in order to do that, let's make a new composition. And I'm going to call this in use. Yours will probably be called scene one or intro or title or whatever. I don't, I don't really care what you name things, but it's going to be one of those 1920 by 1080 final export kind of things. And we're going to hit OK. And we're going to bring some elements out here and then use the thing we created to do stuff to them. And it's going to be fun. So let's make a new solid. This will serve as our background. That'll be fun. And, uh, you know, on that, let's get a ramp going. People like gradient backgrounds. Let's have the start color be I don't know, like a red, you know, not totally red, a little orangey red. You get it going up here like that. That's fun. And let's uh, let's get the ramp scatter going pretty high. Ramp scatter is nice because it can break up uh, the banding that kind of happens. And quite frankly, people like this kind of thing. I don't know why. Again, if you're a future person and this has gone out of fashion, good for you. And thank you for listening to this on your cranial stent. It's pretty great. The next thing we want to do is bring on some elements and an element we could use maybe a square like we did in the example, right? I can just double click on the rectangle tool up here. I've got a f no fill. I've got a stroke, a 60 pixel sized stroke. And uh, I'm just going to change the size of this to be, I don't know, 720 by 720. That's a fun size. Size. I'm going to now use my transition element, bring that down here, and you can see it's got those little markers that we placed on there, huh? Pretty fun markers, right? And it is going to do the transitioning for me. So right now, it's just putting black triangles everywhere. That's not what I'm into. I want shape layer one to use the layer above it as a track mat. So alpha mat transition element. And what it's doing is it is looking at the layer above it and it's saying, all right, everywhere you are, that's where I'm going to be too. Everywhere you're not, I'm not there also. So where it has holes, I've got holes, that kind of thing. And we, that's it. Now it's transitioning on using that thing we just made. Pretty fun, right? Something we can do here, notice how this line is kind of splitting uh, this thing a little bit. We can just shift this over to be like this, kind of line it up on things, and that kind of makes it a little bit more attractive when it goes. You know, you don't if you like that line down the middle of stuff, leave it where it is. I don't care. It's it's your piece, do whatever you want. But on that transitional element, I'm gonna right-click, I'm gonna go time, enable time remapping. This will give us some control over when and how fast this thing goes if we want to do some tweaks. So with time remapping, set a keyframe at each of those marker points, bloop, bloop, and delete the others away, away. And now you can just kind of trim the layer to be right there. And boop, it comes up. And if you want this to transition off, you just go into the future, you can you know, copy this, paste these, and then you can just go right click keyframe assistant, time reverse them. So it comes on and then goes away, which is, you know, what you wanted anyway, right? So that could, that could be a fun thing. You can then use this, duplicate it and transition on a whole bunch of elements. We could make uh, like a new text layer and, you know, we could, we could bring on stuff quite literally just some stuff you know put the stuff below that transitional element um, maybe move this ahead in time a little bit maybe like to here and then we just have to say hey stuff look at the layer above you as an alpha mat and it'll go wee stuff and because stuff is smaller maybe we want to scale this down a bit maybe make it half the size so you can scale down the thing and woo, that's pretty fun. What you could do is you could rotate this transitional element 180 degrees. And what that'll do is it'll bring it on, you know, the way we read from left to right. And when it goes away, you could then have the rotation, you know, rotate back. It could just then uh, go away that way as well. Whee! That's pretty fun. So this comes on and this goes away and then that goes away. So that's one way we can use this. We could also use it. Let me duplicate that. And uh, we could use it. Let's scale that back up, whatever, who cares? We could use this as an adjustment layer. So you want to make it visible and you want to tick this thing here that makes it into an adjustment layer, which means any effect I apply to it will be applied to the things under it. All right. As long as you can 
see the layer. All right. So it doesn't need to be rotating. Make make that stop, please. And uh, what we're going to do is just yeah have this locked back in the middle. That could be fun. And we need to apply some stuff to this. You could apply like a like a transform effect to it and have it scale up everything under it. That could be fun. We could apply a glow. We get a glow going on, maybe like a tiny glow, and then duplicate the glow and, and make like a big glow, kind of like that. That could be fun. I don't know. Do whatever. But notice that as this comes on, it's only applying it to the areas that it is, like where it's at. So it's kind of doing a fun little transition thing where it's like... That could be that could be a good time. That's really all we did in the intro, though, is to have these things and use them in creative ways. Once you've got that element, you can flip it, rotate it, scale it, have it do stuff, change its timing, make it faster, slower, do all sorts of things. And that's it. Tutorial's over. You did it. You are amazing. Congratulations. If you had some trouble with this tutorial, please let me know in the comments and I'll try to get you through it. I try to answer all the questions that come up in the comments. I want you guys to succeed and do well and it's important and uh, if you enjoyed this stuff if you're enjoying this channel definitely subscribe to it so you don't miss any of the fun new content we put out as often as i'm able so definitely subscribe if you're interested in this kind of stuff motion graphics vfx after effects that's what we're into that's what we do here and uh, you know if there are topics that you want to see covered on here if there's questions about after effects motion graphics in general let me know message me on the channel hit me up on the twitter at ec abrams get involved on the facebook page links to all that stuff in the description uh, something else i'll say is uh, if you want to get a hold of the project file that we use to make this if that would be helpful head on over to evanabrams.com you can get that links to that in the description or in the cards i don't totally know how cards work anyway that's it for me thank you so much for watching and like i said subscribe to the channel if this is something you want to learn about and if you do i'll see you around the internet thanks again for watching and have a great day